So I'm really surprised with this laptop. For about $1,600, you're getting incredible specs and great performance. I think a lot of creators are going to love it, especially those who are on a budget, but need a reliable tool to get things done. This is my HP Envy 15 review. So I've used several laptops from HP Spectre lineup, but never tried any of their Envy laptops before. I thought I would be underwhelmed, but I was surprised at how much I like this laptop. Let's start with the design. It's very minimal and not flashy. It's not trying to stand out and I'm completely fine with that. The sides are tapered from the back to the front, which makes it look like a thin device. There are lots of vents on the back, the bottom and on the right side, which is more than what I'm used to, but that tells me that HP is serious about thermals. So I don't mind that at all. So this has a 15 inch 4K OLED display that looks great. You can also change the color profiles depending on what you're doing. The default profile is enhanced for color vibrancy and then you can change it to DCI P3, sRGB or Adobe RGB depending on what you're editing. The display is bright and contrasty, no complaints there. Oh, and I almost forgot it supports touch. The display has your traditional 16 by nine aspect ratio, but I think moving forward, it'd be nice to have the taller 16 by 10 display like on MacBooks or three by two found on Surface laptops. There's also about an inch of bezel below the screen, which doesn't bother me since it raises the display above the base, but I know others would prefer a smaller bezel. Unlike the ThinkPad P1 that I reviewed three videos ago, the display doesn't open to 180 degrees, I'd say it's about 135 degrees, which is typical for many other laptops. Now on to the keyboard. There are pros and cons. There's certainly great key travel, but it feels a little mushy. It's not terrible, but I've used other laptops that feel better to type on. On a positive note, this makes the keyboard quieter than other laptops I've used. I'm also not a fan of the placements for the home and page buttons. I've pressed them so many times by accident when I wanna hit the backspace, enter, or shift buttons. I know I'm nitpicking a little bit here, but that's my least favorite feature on this laptop. However, I can understand why they made this decision. Let me show you. The fingerprint scanner is where the right control key is normally located. I think that's a great location since I barely use that button. From the photos, I thought it would look like one of the, the keys, but the best way for me to describe it is to imagine a trackpad that's the size of one of those keys. Another interesting move is including a shortcut to HP Command Center. This is the tool that lets you control the trade-off between PC performance, temperature, and system noise. During everyday normal usage, like browsing the web, checking emails, editing documents, I leave this to default. However, when I'm about to do some video editing, I press this keyboard shortcut to quickly switch to performance mode, which means HP maximizes CPU and GPU power, and that will also increase fan speed. Another cool feature is the dedicated key to cover the camera. When you press this button, you can see the camera gets covered. This is a little different from other laptops that require you to physically slide the cover on top. Speaking of the camera, it's nothing out of the ordinary. It's 720p and it's good enough for video calls. The trackpad is fine. It's responsive and feels good to touch. It's 5.5 inches, which is a little bigger than the five inches on the Surface Book 3, but not as big as the trackpad on the MacBook Pro 16. The speakers are tuned by b and and they sound fine. Bass is a little low for me, but it's not terrible. You'll be able to enjoy movies or listen to music just fine. The b and control panel lets you finely tune the audio too, or you can choose one of the presets. I'm not an audiophile, so honestly, I just choose one of the presets. Also, I can't figure out why, but the speakers sound much better when it's on my lap than when it's on my desk. I could just be imagining things, but that's what I'm noticing. So the left side has the power port, HDMI 2.0, two USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports, and micro SD card reader. I think most people would have liked a real SD card slot instead of micro, but I guess it's better than nothing. I've started transferring files from cameras through the USB-C cable, so this doesn't bother me as much. 
If it were up to me, I would get rid of the HDMI port and replace that with a full SD card slot. The right side has a USB type A port, audio jack, and vent. You'll see more vents at the bottom and the back of the HP NV15. Inside this HP NV15 is the 10th gen Intel Core i7 processor, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 Max-Q graphics, 16 gigs of RAM, and 512 gigs SSD. You can easily upgrade the RAM up to 32 gigs by just removing the bottom cover with five Torx screws. So I have no complaints about the performance, everyday office tasks uh, work as expected without any lag. Here are some benchmark scores for reference. Editing and rendering are buttery smooth as well with the videos I've thrown at it. I work with video files that are 1080p 8-bit H.264 and then I export as 4K H.264 videos for YouTube with the maximum render quality checked. A 10-minute video, a 10-minute timeline video takes about 8 minutes, which I think is really good. By the way, let me know if you're interested to know more about my video workflow. Not sure if that's something people would be interested in, so let me know in the comments. With these kind of specs, I was also interested in how it performs, and wow, you can definitely game on this laptop. I'm not a big gamer, but I often play Call of Duty Warzone. This game is very comfortable at 1080p on high settings, easily getting 60 frames per second. The fans are definitely loud and you can hear them when rendering videos or playing games. This is where the HP Command Center comes in handy. HP is letting you control the trade-off between performance and fan noise. For me personally, I put this in performance mode whenever I play games or need to edit videos. I always want the best performance and don't mind a fan noise because I'm usually wearing headphones when editing videos or playing games. What's weird, however, is that the fans, they turn on randomly for a second or two, even when the lid is closed. Not sure why that happens. Moving on to software, this came with Windows 10 Home. I did notice unnecessary apps that were pre-installed. Uh, first one was McAfee Antivirus. I removed that right away. I prefer using the built-in Windows 10 security. I also removed Amazon, Booking.com, and Dropbox. I don't know why that was. Uh, they were included there. There were HP apps as well. HP Support Assistant is important for firmware updates. HP Quick Drop is cool. It lets you easily transfer files between the laptop and your phone. It's like AirDrop, but it supports Windows, iOS, and Android. The battery life is not bad, especially for a laptop with a 4K display and a dedicated GPU like the RTX 2060 Max-Q. Unplugged, I can use this laptop with everyday tasks for about six hours. I haven't tried editing on the laptop just on battery, but I can imagine the battery life to be much shorter if I try. I'm usually plugged in when I'm gaming or editing videos, and the power adapter is pretty big, so keep that in mind if you're doing a lot of traveling or have a long commute. Here's the power brick next to my Pixel 5 for size comparison. The HP NV15 starts at $1,149, and that's with Full HD display, GTX 1650 Ti GPU, and 256 gigs of SSD. But I would recommend getting this model with 4K OLED display, RTX 2060, and 512 gigs SSD for about $1,600. You're getting more power while still keeping the price relatively low. You could also upgrade the RAM yourself to 32 gigs. It's pretty easy. So that's the HP NV15. Overall, it's one of the best laptops for creators for the price. It has a great display, excellent performance, simple design. You can certainly game on it when you're done with work. The downsides are minor, like I'm not a fan of the keyboard layout and the fan noise might bother some people. But for those who will use this for work, will will not mind that at all because of the performance that this laptop brings. All right, so that's my HP NV15 review. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. That's all for now. 
See you in the next video.